Welcome, dear ranchers, to Far Far Radio, where we broadcast stories, interviews, and news within the Far Far Range. Today, we have quite a heartfelt story that will make Cupid blush. Get to your significant other or snuggle with your favorite slime because you cannot miss this romantic story. <laughs> Relationship Science by Marauder. Four months ago, as the spaceship capsule had just reached the far, far range with Beatrix on board, everything seemed so infinitely hard, as infinite as the lands around her ranch and several green columns marking its borderlines. A step outside, and you are ready to lose yourself and go down the slime sea. However, Beatrix was not among people who fall back in the face of the unknown. It was purely easy to turn her surroundings into a well-maintained and familiar place. She managed to do that at home just fine when she owned that little flower store. Nevertheless, home always lacked something she needed. That was the exact reason why she sat on the front steps of her ranch in Far Far Range, and not that old Osmium house in a small town on Earth. They probably stopped making houses out of osmium as Beatrice has reached her new home. But even though she didn't care, her soul now belonged to this place. Despite the fact that taking care of slimes and upgrading the ranch took almost all her time, Bay sometimes had some spare hours for daydreaming. To think about the past she left on Earth on the dusty, long-forgotten flower shelves. About people who took her will to depart so skeptically, as if for one closest person, Beatrice didn't expect that person to react in such a peaceful fashion upon finding out what she was up to. But nowadays, thinking it all over, she admitted to herself that it was the best way. She never wanted to hurt anyone, but living up to everybody's standards was not among her plans. There were enough people to take part in her life here too. Anyway, during her first week, Bay managed to meet so many people that wouldn't have ever visited her flower store, and everyone was so agitated to receive something and not without payment. The feeling of being helpful was probably one of the best in the world. For Beatrix, though, it served more like a pleasant addition to her personal household. Spare money and contacts are never wasted. At the end, that was exactly how she came down to having three of her neighbors as pals, although only two of them could willingly admit that. At the end, that was exactly how one of them had asked her out. It surely did add some diversity into her life in Far Far Range. Before, she would just talk to neighbors through video chat. Their conversations were short and on the case, and usually included only her callers talking because she rarely managed to put a word in. Do this, do that, and now I will explain why. Then I'll talk about my lousy relationship with my dad, and now I will get distracted by work and forget about you entirely. That is why it surprised her when the man behind the video feed asked her about something they didn't acknowledge it at first. Beatrix, are you all right? Should I restart the transmission? Oh no, 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 it's okay. She muttered, going through the last things he said in her head and desperately trying to remember the stuff he said the last minute to no avail. Did you ask me about something? I wanted to know your opinion about personal encounters, spending time together, free from mind-burdening activities. You mean, do I enjoy talking to someone in person? Bay smiled. Of course, Victor never used simple wording. Everything should be strict and double-checked. She, on the contrary, was straightforward and talked simply so anyone could understand her. However, this simple-minded approach did not offend Victor in any way. Correct. It depends on the person. If I like them, 
I will talk to them on any given day, texting, phoning, sending photos, talking to person too. The girl shrugged. Someone meowed impatiently behind her, and she turned around.、Oh, look, Victor, I need to go. If that's okay, I have some stuff waiting for me. You can call me later if you have more spare time. The screen picture flinched for a moment. There was a possibility for our conversation to end before requirement, but at this very moment, the probability is way less than ten minutes ahead. Victor, if you want to say something right now, do it. You can say so much while uttering that sentence. Honestly, Victor smiled patiently, but it was obvious that she only had a minute or two to stay and listen. Yes. All right. He hesitated for a second, but continued. Will you go on a date with me? Beatrice opened her mouth to say something, but in the exact moment, Tappy slimes have finally breached through the barrier, and one of them landed directly onto the transmitter antenna. But their feet died immediately. Well, at least it saved the girl from extra embarrassment. She didn't know how to answer. It completely caught her off guard. The working day of Beatrice went on as usual, collecting plorts, turning on some patch watering, powering up the drones, catching runaway hen tents. Nothing out of schedule. In the end, she could only sit down for a second by evening hours, just 7 p.m., and it was already so late that the local moonlight secondary planet lit the ranch with its light. It looked a lot larger compared to the actual moon, though. Perhaps it was just closer to far, far range than moon was to Earth. In any case, the light of the local secondary planet was still as romantic as moonlight was to an Earthman, and it successfully triggered corresponding thoughts. The last time Beatrice got asked out happened almost three years ago. She remained with that person until the very departure from Earth, and throughout those years they had together, Peters was happy. Maybe not fully happy, but at least to some degree. That person hadn't burned the bridges before then and kept writing her through star mail, unlike some other acquaintances. Those who asked her out before Cassie disappeared right after the first date, and only some mentioned what pushed them away. Some didn't like her stubborn nature. Some got discouraged by her hiking hobby, and some were downright disgusted by her choice of hair color. What was waiting for her this time? Bay stood up from the front steps of her ranch, went around it leisurely, and sat down at the edge of a bright orange cliff, tumbling her legs above the slime sea. The open space looked borderless, unknown, just like the future brought by tomorrow day. But the lands outside the ranch also seemed borderless to Beatrice one day, and now she could easily say they were not. Maybe the future was also way easier to rein in. She shook her head. Maybe Victor was still expecting an answer, or that she would at least call back and say that she was okay, and a slime simply damaged her antenna. Now a giant lightning had struck her working place and destroyed Beatrice and her ranch without a trace. She began contemplating other stuff to happen to her and almost missed a video call. She barely made it to the screen and pressed the respond button. Yes. Beatrix, is everything all right? I think you already asked that today. The girl smiled wearily. Really? Perhaps. Our morning conversation ended so abruptly that it put me into a tense. It may be said that it even. Victor. She raised a hand to prevent a word flood. I'll go. R- really? It is not interference, I hear. Is it? His voice sounded so unbelieving that Bay flared up. <laughs> no, it's not. When will it take place? When done, I had to mention that I considered the probability of success with this enterprise as below average. So my contemplations considering date and time did not make it past month definition. Let's have it the day after tomorrow in the evening, about six, in your workshop. Um, yes, it is incredible, but your suggestion fits all acceptable frameworks. 
Victor clapped his hands excitedly, and Pei remembered his delight towards her patience and good results in gathering bug reports for simulation. It looked like another experiment went smoothly, although no one knew whether this was the reason for the scientist's delight. We had this settled then. Goodbye, Beatrix. The screen went black. She sighed and glared at the clock. Eight past midday. She had 46 hours to get ready. However, that would apply if she knew what to do to get ready. She never prepared for dates in any special way. She would only take a shower and put in some neat iron clothes. No makeup or perfume. Looking back, perhaps it was partially the reason her days went so lousy in the past until someone threw the prejudice aside. No one could take away Cassie's lack of judging a book by its cover. Oh come on, the cover isn't that bad. Beatrice muttered, watching herself in a tall mirror inside the ranch house. Sure, hands covered in band-aids, disheveled hair, but anyone will look like that in her place. Try handling crystal slimes without inflicting self-damage. Looking over herself one last time, Bay decided that even though she looked awesome in working clothes, a date requires something special. Therefore, she decided to ask for help of someone good at femininity. Eternity must have passed before a settlement agreement had been reached upon the outfit. Beatrice should wear to such an important event, although this eternity lasted for only a few hours. For Bay, cleaning El Grill seemed way less monotonous than choosing appropriate clothes, but it was her own fault. She has agreed that Machi Miles knew way more about fashion than she did. It almost came to Machi coming down and bringing Beatrice to fashion stores, but Bay declined her suggestion, saying that Machi probably doesn't want to waste her precious time onwards. And then, the proper outfit appeared out of nowhere, a light green pink summer dress with white polka dots. It was tossed aside at the beginning, but came into shot exactly when needed. Exactly, one could easily get lost in Machi's wardrobe, although it was just a ranch in far far range where she could hardly go out anywhere. It possibly existed for the exact reason to present some nice outfit to someone needing and to look good enough. The cream pink dress, ironed and hung up on a rack, was way more prepared for the date than its new owner. It was T minus nothing, but time slowed down incredibly, although it raced like a quick silver slime during usual day's work. It often occurs that you agree to a suggestion, but as time comes, your agitation comes down drastically. Beatrice could feel it now like never before. Nevertheless, she was a person to keep her word. This is why it was hard but necessary to suppress the urge to step down. She took an airbrush and started combing her matted hair, wincing from the pain. She usually had no time to get herself presentable, and why would she do that for anyone? No person had visited her ranch during these four months, and those calling on video did need her to look presentable. Done with her hair, Bay glanced at the mirror and her hands reached for the everlasting band-aid on her cheek. Leave you alone, but it looks so… not ladylike and… She pulled her head back. A small band-aid won't do a lot of damage, it could even look cute. Her hands though. Bay looked around the room and her gaze fell upon a fresh lab coat hanging on a chair. One of those she always forgot to take to her workshop and had to wear the old one corroded by chemicals. She didn't contemplate it for long. The next moment, the lab coat already framed her shoulders. Being creative is the core. On walking to the teleporter to Victor's workshop, Bay caught herself thinking that it would be the first time through four months plus one year of sleeping on her way to far far range that she would meet a living person. 
Talking to someone face to face would never compare to a video call because you have to rely on connection stability and cannot even touch your acquaintance. In real life, however, Bay shoot these thoughts away and stepped into the teleport. A feeling of zero gravity that started her so much the first time, and there she is, deep under the slime sea, in one of the most high-tech places in the world. At least, no one has proved her the opposite yet. Beatrix, is that you? I just need one minute. Please grant me it. The voice sounded awfully close, but they obeyed and then tried to search for a source, standing by the portal. The workshop laboratory didn't look much different. There's the pad to enter virtual reality, some containers to empty your backpack as you enter. However, Beatrice couldn't help but feel that something changed, as if the lights were dimmed a bit and the air smelled like not ozone, but flowers? Sorry for the inconvenience. My calculation regarding free time consumption failed me. Next time, everything will be carried out more thoughtfully. The voice stumbled as its owner came out of the lab and saw Beatrice. She noted to herself that Victor had probably spent more time getting ready for the whole thing than she expected. The only thing to remind of the usual Victor were his goggles that he seemingly kept on the entire time. And if previously the lab code perfectly shaped his shoulder, Right now, a moderately formable white shirt and dark brown slacks did that just fine. If someone not equated with Victor would have seen him now, they would guess him to be an ingenious scientist in no time. But anyone from his social circle would agree that Victor looked a lot more human like this. Just the right effect for an informal meeting. So they stood in silence, watching each other in awe before someone worked up the nerve to start talking. You look... expectedly? The man uttered, smiling sincerely. As Bay looked at him with surprise, he hurried to add, Expectedly beautiful, I meant to say. I am still experiencing troubles formulating my thoughts, especially if these are related to pretty women. You know, it is hard to articulate anything at all. <laughs> I understand. Beatrice nodded, holding herself from chuckling. You though, don't look expectedly at all, honestly. Is that bad? No, that's charming, true true. Charming, hmm. It looked like Victor didn't expect to hear such words addressed to him, and he wasn't good at hiding that. Frankly saying, he didn't hide it at all. Alright, follow me. He headed back into the lab, and the girl was a little glad that he didn't tape her eyes with a ribbon or something like that. She knew this place well enough anyway, and not a lot of local stuff could surprise her, save for perhaps a small table instead usually centered face lemon tree. The tree was still there, but moved to the side a little bit so that it could create a cover for the table. Oh wow. When did you find the time for all this? Bay asked with a tint of amazement, watching the composition. You're always busy with something. I, uh, can arrange my schedule according to a certain scheme, previously defined. If I had no sense of my own plans, I would not handle the program as needed. Victor shrugged but was obviously flattered. Take a seat and we will start our date. Peter sat down on the table and so did her companion. Then the same thought came up in their minds. One could crack up a joke and say, well, it's as far as I ever gone. What are we doing now? Beatrice thought of some pickup lines that she learned from Cassie. One more helpful legacy of previous relationship. But none of those lines just fit. Fortunately, she came up with a win-win suggestion. What do you like to eat? Mm, does this question require a detailed response? No, not really. It's a question of what you want to eat right now. Bay smiled and nodded towards a replication machine. She didn't like using it a lot as she usually cooks something herself and technological world they live in allowed them to consume food only when you want it, not your body keeping yourself always nutrition foolproof. Though, if you wanted something without cooking yourself, be my guest and use the replicator. Have you used this machine? 
It is defective, is it not? The scientist responded with distrust. Looking over the tin metal case that resembled a microwave. Yes, I have. It's not defective at all. I just put some pressure on an electricity cable, and it's working just fine. She shrugged and tapped her desired meal, instantly receiving it. Not very healthy, but it wasn't something to eat on an everyday basis. Your turn. Can I have the same? I've never tried it before. As Beatrice at the table, her companion finally came up with an idea of how to spend a date. He leapt too far though and started speculating about fast food and its influence on human health in terms of nuclear physics. Beatrice got used to weird talks at the table back when she was dating Cassie, and it wasn't the reason they broke up. So she simply consumed small yellow potato bricks and not really listening to Victor's contemplation. Meeting no resistance, he went on, and Bay had a feeling that he didn't really have an idea of day topics. At least, if you speak about science, choose an area your companion can add to. So my position on this fact will remain stagnant. What is your opinion on that, Beatrix? She had no idea what he had asked about. Perhaps Victor actually talked about something interesting. And she tried to listen to him at the beginning, but there was nothing to hope for. So she didn't think of anything better than putting a fork with a potato piece into Victor's mouth. His facial expression was priceless. You wanted to try it, right? Eat. Bay said with a straight face, and he ate because talking with food in your mouth was a bit hard. Odd feeling. The scientist spoke, eyeing another potato piece. Cannot say that this meal is repulsive, but something unusual is definitely there. Petrus watched him in silence. Then she moved away and stood up from the table. I have to go. Oh, is something wrong? Victor followed her moves and outstretched a hand in a perilous effort. Did I talk nonsense? No, it's all fine. I really need to go. Bay smiled as sincerely as she could. Don't have to follow me. It's not a long way. F fine. Thanks for this evening. Thank you too. Leaving the last smile as goodbye, she headed home. Victor says something more about leaving the table here to sit in the meantime. Beatrice wasn't really interested back then and left without turning back. <laughs>、Beatrice、kept asking herself, what was that and what for? She couldn't say she was disappointed about that date because she wasn't expecting anything specific. Victor behaved just like anyone would think him to behave. It was purely logical that he was always occupied with working and thought about it even in the meantime. And their talking topics rarely overlapped, as they mostly talked about range exchange or bug reports from the simulation. Everything was kept purely format. But it was him who asked her out, not vice versa. Petrus even considered discussing the situation with someone, a close friend maybe, but whom? Only Maggie knew about her date. But Bay kept the invited's name in secret so that Maggie wouldn't freak out. Despite that, Miles found everything out on her own and called her on the very next day. First, to resent on Beatrice concealing dating the exact Victor, and second, to ask how did it go. Surprisingly, the second thing interested her more. Ah, men are all so weird. Take my dad example. He confessed to my mom that he wanted to marry her only after one whole year of phone calls and letters. There was no hint of trouble before that. Maggie grinned and brushed an invisible speck of dust off her shoulder. One can never understand what the heck these weird men think about. Forget it, Bay. Well, I don't really suffer from it. That's the spirit. Maybe you better help me out with quicksilver floors like in the old times. Peter shrugged. How many times did she find comfort in working, even back on Earth when everything was falling apart? She sighed and glanced at her backpack, waiting silently. 
Well, why not spend some time with benefits? I'll be there in a minute. Uh, wait, there's a second call. Okay, answer it and get your butt over to the Nipple Valley. Gotta give you a chance to earn at least some good money, huh? Machi winked at her and ended the call. The next caller's avatar picture came online and Bay frowned. Yes? What kind of slime do I have to hunt this time? Hello, Beatrix. I would like to ask a different thing at the start. Well, come on, get to it, the girl stumbled to herself. Her facial expression must have been different from the usual people one because Victor became a little more concerned. What is it? Are you feeling well? I do not mean physical condition, although that would also count as a point of interest. I'm okay, working as usual. Bay shrugged. So, what do you want? Oh, yes. Seven rock slimes and six quantum ones. If possible, please acquire the full. Yes, I will head right out. Anything else? No, that will be all. Looking forward to your delivery. Goodbye. The screen went black. Beatrice looked around her ranch. Somewhere around the corrals, she had both rock and quantum slimes. However, despite the fact she never asked, these slimes would most probably end up as test subjects, so she decided to get some new slimes for him. Harming her own children won't do. Beatrice could finally recollect the following events. At some point when she was coming back, her backpack battery failed during her flight from one island to another. Such coincidence proved to be fatal for her jetpack. The last thing she saw was the still of Slime Sea, so serene and blissful, and her head was full of thoughts about how she risked her life for other people too often. Death didn't come for her. Instead, she woke up in her ranch house, in her bed. Her backpack and battered clothes were hung on a chair out to dry, and a handwritten note lay on the nightstand. Bay slowly rose from her pillow, moving a pink slime blush aside. Her head was buzzing, but it was about midday. The local star was already calling for action for slime care. So Beatrice got out of bed, trying to ignore her sickness and dressed up. Heading outside, she took the note and read it as she shut the doors. Beatrix, you washed up on the shore of Thor's ranch today. I was out to take a stroll, and what do I see? I had no idea I'd meet you like this. Well, it doesn't really matter. We argued about where to leave you to get well. Thor suggested her place, but I convinced her on a home health aid and brought you here. Wanted to take a look at how you were holding on, doing better than I thought. I never wish to put you in the state that you like you were in, but I did what I needed to. Either way, nice work. You're doing well. You'll feel better by morning, so get well and don't lose heart. Falling to the slime sea isn't the best thing to experience, but things happen. It is what it is. Don't forget to feed your buzzards as you get up, or they'll eat you instead. Beatrice smiled upon seeing a familiar signature. For some reason, it was pleasant to know that Obson, considered vanished without a trace, is safe and well and still lives somewhere, where the slime sea brought her yesterday. As she reads, the slimes were mostly discontent and purred, eyeing fruit and vegetables right in front of them on the patches. Passing by the video transmitter, the girl noticed a bunch of missed calls, but decided to check them out later as she get things sorted out. When all corrals were clean, all food sorted and plorts sold, they could finally get some peace. Head buzz didn't go anywhere, but constant work kept it drowned out. She leaned onto the video transmitter, holding a tappy slant that kept trying to escape, meowing impatiently. They pressed the play button, and the answering machine started talking with messages recorded for her in the meantime. Yesterday, 2101. Bay, it's Machi. What the heck? I've been waiting for you this whole evening in the valley, and you didn't even bother to call back and say you didn't want easy money today? That's not how things work. Next time, call again and confirm you will come. My time's running. Yesterday. 21-11
Beatrix, good evening. Are you okay? According to my exchange experience with you, searching for needed materials takes you no longer than four hours, when more than six had passed at the moment. This business is not urgent to expect an immediate answer, but your absence is a matter of concern to me. Please call back when you listen to this message. Goodbye. Today, 6.55. Beatrix, good morning. I have outsourced this task to a different person, and they have supplied me with everything I needed, so you should not worry about your services being in vain. I am a lot more concerned about the state of your well-being and current whereabouts. The fact that you have not called back yesterday evening does not reassure me about your condition. Please call back as soon as you can. Goodbye. Today, nine zero two. Bay, it's Machi. Where are you? It's okay. Slip a call at evening. Maybe you were you were busy, but it's already nine. Call me as you get home. There is some stuff about quicksilver slimes I'd want to discuss. Today, ten fourteen. Hey, up, Beatrice. It's Octon Hortez. Didn't expect to hear from me, did ya? Everyone's on their toes to find ya. I called Dora and heard your story, so I will pass it on to anyone looking for you. Okay? Get well soon. Today, 1016. Bay, Machi again. Fine, now I see what's happening to you. We can hold off the slime talk until the better times. So just visit my ranch when you have the time. But it doesn't mean you can slack off. I need extra help any time, and you need extra money. So get going. Moving is living. Today, 1017. Beatrix, good morning once again. I want to express my regrets concerning your physical trauma caused by my request and ask for forgiveness. I hope your condition has improved as you are listening to this message. Ah oh yes, and when you have some spare time, can you please visit my laboratory? I would greatly appreciate help in debugging this slimulation. As you might remember, it does not affect vestibular apparatus and you cannot be harmed inside of it. It is only your pride that may be inflicted with damage upon losing. I will be waiting for you. Goodbye. End of messages. The message stream ended right here. Bay stood still, digesting all information and trying to get a better grip on her slime that constantly wiggled in attempts to devour delicious chickens in a coop nearby. Her headache and fatigue have magically disappeared as she heard a suggestion to enter the slimulation. She liked it even though it wasn't much different from her usual trip to the far far rangelands. Time flew past her when she was bug testing. However, during the last several days, her shared business with Victor Humphrey didn't tend to go well and another one could also end in failure. Despite her worries, everything that could go wrong during the test went just right. She felt wonderful while running and jumping around the half textured world and came back with a significant maximum catch of 150 glitch slimes. They turned into bug reports, as usual, and after unloading them into the collecting port, Beatrice called the lab owner. Yes? Ah, Beatrix. I'm happy to see you again. How are you? I'm fine. You know I won't sit still for long. She sighed, and the man behind the screen smiled at her. Many of far, far range travelers are similar to you. I would point out that it is a trait unique to those who venture into these lands. I also want to point out that I did not sit still as well and was in the process of a new important project. It is almost out of alpha and will be soon ready for beta testing. Really? What's that project about? Oh, is the thing you are working on away from your lab down here? Well, not exactly. I will show it to you as the time comes. Now, it is more important to process what you have brought me today. I have been continuing to monitor the behavior of glitch slimes. It seems that even without updating my slimulation code, they continue to evolve. It will be exciting to see where their life takes them next. 
Soon they will crawl out and take over the world. Beatrice chuckled. Who knows? Indeed, who knows? You mean your social contacts? Yes, that is exactly what I mean. I've begun a star mail exchange with an old acquaintance of mine. We have little in common, disagree on several scientific topics. She is very slow to reply, and I find that especially irritating. But we both adore the same music. It's wonderful. Victor went on talking about his social experience with those people whose behavior he didn't try to simulate, including mostly women, and not a single word about their bizarre date. He hasn't mentioned it at any time at all, like nothing has happened. Maybe he wanted to erase it from his life and pretend it never happened, but Beatrice sure as heck did not. Do you want to say anything else? Oh, um, maybe just wish for our partnership to continue? In the matter of slimulation and glitch slimes, your efforts have brought me very far. Okay, I'm flattered to know that. <laughs> the girl mumbled, barely holding back tears. Before Victor could ask about it, she ended the call and sat down in front of the video transmitter. A pile of manful cubes lay on the floor by her side. They stared at them blankly for a while before bursting into tears, her face buried in her knees. She overlooked the moment she grew seemingly attached to someone who doesn't really seek your company. You look out for his every word, rush for any missions, however dangerous they are to gain his favor. But nothing changes. He will always find something more important to do, more people to meet. Even Cassie stopped sending letters to her. They remembered about the tour, and that Cassie probably has no time to write anything. But it was so infinitely hurtful to be left alone at this exact moment. Beatrice lost track of time and didn't know how long she was sitting in front of a video transmitter, sobbing and wiping her tears with jagged sleeves. The light grew a bit brighter, indicating that it was already close to midnight. Suddenly, something amorphous, warm, and very assistant pushed her elbow. One of the tappy slimes followed its owner into the lab and was now trying to console her. She smiled weakly and patted the slime on the head. You got out again, you naughty little pal. She wagged a finger at it jokingly. The slime hid behind her arm. She laughed through tears and hugged the gray slime ball as tight as the pink blush in her sleep. <laughs> Margie was right. They muttered, along with peaceful purring. Men are so weird. I'm also to blame with my emotions. How did it come to this? The tappy purring sounds soothed her and made her incredibly sleepy. She had only just realized how tired and drowsy she was before passing out, leaning onto the transmitter. She thought about moving tappy slimes into the lab, just an experiment. Beatrix? Is that a tabby slime on the ceiling lamp, or are my eyes already failing me? A week later, when she had already moved the squad of small predators inside the lab, Victor paid a visit again. She noticed his presence from being here from time to time, but she always failed to actually see him. Perhaps she thought that's for the best. Quite a lot of time had passed since she fell asleep in tears in this cold underwater facility. A lot of stones unturned, a lot of paper wasted. They often wrote something when her thoughts couldn't find another exit. But even this poetic way of expression sort of failed this time. Here and there on the ranch, papers were flying around, scribbled with emotional handwriting, until wind threw them into the incinerator or into Hunter Slime's corrals. But work did its magic indeed. Soon Beatrice disciplined herself to abstract from Victor and anything connected to him. 
Machi was head over heels with joy because instead of slime emulation test, Bae switched to Quicksilver slimes. It didn't bring much joy to Beatrice herself though, but at least it didn't put her face to face with something she didn't want to hear. Nevertheless, here he comes again. If avoiding someone was acceptable, escaping was pure cowardice, and Beatrice would never stand such a treat in herself. Yes, it's a tappy. I moved them here. They like all the scientific stuff. Destroying video transmitter antennas, for example? Victor chuckled, but it provoked no response from the girl. He squirmed a bit and fetched a cupid box seemingly out of nowhere. I've finished working on the project I mentioned a week ago. Oh, what's that? A Q-shaped slime? Haha. <laughs> no, that was one of the older projects. It was a futile effort and... Excuse me for going off the topic again. Take it. Victor handed her the box and she took it cautiously. It wasn't heavy, although it certainly looked like it was a second ago. It's not dangerous to open, is it? Of course not. Furthermore, I've created it especially for you to open. It was a project of personal matter. All these talks about personal matters sounded extremely suspicious, so Bay hurried to open the box. Instead was a small device that looked like the portable Slimepedia a little bit, although this one utilized additional buttons for texting and some other unknown functions. Is this a messenger? Bay uttered, not quite grasping the concept of why she had needed to use the device. Video calls at far far range worked well enough. Kind of. This is a device for instant messaging across distances slightly exceeding 1,000 light years. So it can reach? Yes, its range is enough to reach Earth. Unfortunately, this only works for text messaging because voice communication requires additional power. But this is only the first model. I will take it to refinement from here. Silence hung. Victor waited like an A-grade student ready to answer questions from the committee. Beatrice was looking over the newly received little machine and trying to formulate her feelings. Finally, she succeeded. But why for me? I don't remember asking about such things personally. Ah, this is where I need to show you something. Nice of you to remind me. Follow. The numerous console stations were all in the progress of various calculations, but one of them was locked with a lock and screen. Victor unlocked it and launched the Star Mail application. I've received several curious letters recently. They were from a sender unknown to me. I usually read everything that transcends the spam filter, so this sender had me greatly interested. There were four letters in total, coming at intervals of roughly 24 hours, and the first one came 10 days ago. On the next day after I've invited you to an informal private meeting. And who was that sender? Beatrice really wanted to say something among the lines of, I don't want to listen about women writing you letters, but kept it to herself. They were signed as Casey. I had to read the first letter to make sure they have reached the wrong addressee. These letters were meant to reach you, Beatrix. She barely held the device box from falling down. That is why she stopped receiving letters from Cassie. They were just ending up at the wrong person. But from everyone they could reach, it was fortunately Victor. Honestly, I was shocked upon reading that first letter. I have never before read such kind words written to anyone. At some point, I have even started to envy the sender that they are able to express their feelings with simply written words, and they are still soul-piercing. And these feelings were not towards just someone, but you. You, who I asked out the day before. I did not know what to do. Cancel the meeting? I thought it to be unfair towards you. Women often prepare themselves for important meetings early and you could already be in good spirits regarding this. I did not want to upset you. So instead you chose to behave the least romantic? Beatrice sighed. If not for the box in her hands, she would have angrily crossed them. I, I thought back then that such behavior would make you distance. At the end, 
it was my fault for making a mistake of trying to achieve more than a partnership with someone who was already in such a charming relationship. So at the same evening, I started working on an advanced transmitter that could send messages faster than star mail. Instant messages would be perfect, but it suffers a bit of time loss nevertheless. I just wanted to make your letter exchange faster and safer by excluding the possibility for a letter to reach the wrong person. This messenger can only send letters to one person and they can write to this selected channel in response. Everything strictly defined. Science is victorious. You're just saying that you decided to help me reconnect with Cassie despite 1,000 light years between us? I thought it was worth trying, although this decision was not made without hesitation. Why hesitation? Though Victor was explaining his well-doing without any problems, this question along with Beatrice's gaze made him turn around. One can never understand why the heck these weird men think about. Marty's irritated voice came alive in her head. Why? Because my scarce vocabulary will never be enough to describe how sweet and amazing you are, Beatrix. I tried so many times by using a dictionary, but it was just insincere. I needed to find the words of my own. When I saw you that evening, in a lab coat on top of a dress, my head just exploded with what I wished to find. But the scheduled behavior could not allow all of this, forcing me to suppress it. My scientific chattering incinerated everything that so wonderfully came to my mind. But a glance at you, and I can already feel myself remembering. During this speech, the scientists stared at anything but Beatrix. The star mill terminal, the face lemon tree behind her back, the tappy slams jumping at close proximity of ceiling lamps. After an awkward pause, he glanced at her again, but looked away instantly. Oh, sorry. Saying all this was not required, honestly. I, um... You can test the messenger. It is all yours now, and... Victor! Hearing his name with such a quiet and trembling voice, he faced Beatrice at once. With a smile and eyes full of tears, she handed him back the device box. It caused the scientist great confusion. But what about- I broke up with Cassie more than a year ago, when I decided to depart and start a new life here. Yes, I'm still getting letters and reading them with tenderness in my heart. But it's all past matters. If you take everything into the present, you can't move on. Seeing Victor's astonishment, she put the box on the nearest table-like surface and made several steps towards him. The present's right here. I don't need a refined messenger. I need you. Their height difference wasn't crucial, but Beatrice still had to rise on tiptoe to kiss Victor gently on the lips who was still shocked with his course of events. At some point, she thought that he had changed his mind and simply doesn't know how to blow her off, but it looked more like he was just experiencing an emotional overload. Is it that simple? The scientist finally uttered, faintly registering it. Just a couple of words? <laughs> There's nothing complicated about love. Bay smiled, wiping away her tears. People just tend to make everything complex. Oh, Beatrix. The next thing she knew, he embraced her tightly, but softly. She drowned in the feeling, partially forgetting that she had something to do around the lab, and she came here for a reason. It didn't matter. Nothing else mattered. Beatrix, forgive me for all the nonsense I caused. I should have told you everything. I think we should maybe try one more time with a date. Everything is... A loud blob deafened them, and the lights went out. The slime seems to have completed their suicidal mission of exploring the light sources. The couple had nothing else to do but pressing against each other and looking around. Beatrix? Uh... Could you place all slimes somewhere else, preferably furthest from this lab? If you redirect Cassie's letters back to my star mail. Deal.